Yo, people, yo, people. So as the joke that is the Trump hush money trial rages on, I thought I'd show you this video because I think it will resonate with a lot of you. I think it may describe how a lot of you feel about the various Trump legal cases. So without further ado, let's get into this. Thank you guys for coming out today. I was only in that courtroom for about two hours and I heard uh, Michael Cohen admit at least six times that he lied. I mean, that's what this is about. That tells you everything you need to know when this is the star witness, him and Stormy Daniels. The American people know what's going on. You guys know what's going on. You, you guys know why President Trump is here. Why is he here? Right there, political persecution. They can't beat him. They can't beat him and everybody knows it. The polls are showing it right now. They couldn't beat him. They tried to take him out with the Russian scandals. They tried to impeach him multiple times. And the American people also know that he could have retired down to Florida and lived the American dream. But he came back. Why? Because he sees what's happening in this country. And this is just one more example of it. And one more reason why we came up here, we volunteered our time, is because we represent good Americans that are tired of this crap too. Yeah, that's right. She is too. And I know there's many other people that are tired of it. And they want us to fight for this country. They want it. They want us to make America great again. And they know that President Trump, that's right. They know that President Trump is the biggest obstacle in between them destroying this country and turning it into some totalitarian state. And that's what they want. Just like this judge up here. All right. We're not going to allow that to happen. I know President Trump isn't going to allow it to happen. And you are going to see come November. Even people that hated President Trump's guts are seeing how rigged and how messed up this system is. And they know if it can happen to him, it can happen to them. So there you go. There you go. So there's a lot to get through here. But before I actually even get into this, there is something I wanted to show you, which I thought was so hilarious in, in, in a way that I just don't I don't even know what to say to this. So this is a headline on MSNBC. And this isn't a joke, by the way. This is an opinion piece on MSNBC. And this, this is the title of the, of the piece. How Michael Cohen's past lies make him a more credible witness. <laughs> oh, people. Oh, the, the, I swear these people are not subtle at all, bro. These people are not subtle at all. It is so strange as a Brit watching, like, viewing American mainstream media. And just seeing how overtly political some of these guys are. At least to me, right? The fact that, like, there is still this pretense, I think, at, like, places like MSNBC and CNN. Of being objective news sources, when in my opinion, they're not. I mean, you can disagree if you want, but I don't think they are. The fact that this still exists... But you have articles like this coming out talking about, <laughs> you know, Michael Cohen being a liar actually makes him a very good witness. What the? And if you want to read the piece, you can. One of the main arguments is just that he, when Cohen lied back in the, you know, whenever he was lying, back in whenever times, he was lying for Trump. And so now that he's turned on Trump, he must be telling the truth. <sighs> okay. I have a hard time believing that Michael Cohen lied specifically for Donald Trump like they were besties. But maybe he did. Maybe he did. Let's say for argument's sake, he lied for Trump. As Trump's lawyer at the time, that might have had some external benefits for him. I'm just saying, like, even if he did lie for Donald Trump, those lies for Donald Trump could have also been lies for Michael Cohen, seeing as they were on the same team. But apparently... I'm supposed to take him as a very credible witness, people. Very credible. And frankly, I, frankly, in all honesty, I don't even care if he's credible or not. I don't give a shit if he's credible or not credible. I couldn't give a fuck. Because this trial is a joke. This whole trial is a joke. I don't care. I mean, he calls it political persecution. I said before, this, this trial is going on in NYC, right? And again, for those of you you know, who are American, not American, live in NYC, don't live in NYC, frankly, for all of you, really. You know that, you probably know that NYC is not exactly a crime-free zone. NYC has very serious crime problems. 
And the fact that court time is being wasted on low-level felony, which is what this is, the charges are classed as low-level felonies, is a joke. Why why is court time being wasted on this garbage? This this thing that isn't even a trial. I mean, this thing has got like... And this is a point I'm going to get to later on in the video. But does anybody really actually know what the charges are? I know what they are because I've, I've put it in a video. I've, I've researched them. I looked them up. But if I was just to watch the news coverage, right? Do I actually... Have, would I have any clue about what is Trump is actually being charged with? The answer is no. Because the whole trial hasn't really been about Trump and his criminal act. It's all been about or his beef with Michael Cohen and, you know, what, what exactly happened on that one night with Stormy Daniels that everybody cares about so much. And that's what this whole trial has been about. It's been a fucking drama. It's like Judge Judy more than an actual trial. Or his beef with Quan Merchan and, and whoever else. That's what this has been. This has been a fucking... Uh, uh, I don't even know how to describe this. It's like Judge Judy or some shit. Fucking Judge Rinder. I, I don't know what this is. But this doesn't, like, the way this comes across and the way it's portrayed in the media is not really like a trial. It's kind of like a, just a drama series. And, you know, it's like, why, why am I here sitting here? Like, NYC has real crime problems. And, and we're, you know, New York is having to sat, sit through this mess, right, where... Instead of prosecuting murderers or, or grapists or any number of horrible felons, you know, instead we're wasting time talking about Stormy Daniels maybe fainted when she saw Trump in his underwear and, you know, Michael Cohen's on the stand, Trump and Juan Merchan having a beef. Like, what the fuck is this clown show? And the thing is, the people always like, a lot of the stuff I see is people trying to shift this onto Trump. The only reason he is there, he's not there of his own free will. Who, who brought him there? Yeah, I think this is Alvin Bragg's case, isn't it? Alvin Bragg brought him there. It's not like Trump decided he wanted to just go to court, bro. He was brought here. If you brought him to what he and many perceive to be a joke trial, what do you think he's going to treat it like? This is like, if, you know, a lot of people don't view this as a serious trial. They don't. And, yeah, I mean, oh, oh, my, my brain hurts. My brain hurts from a lot of this stuff, right? Because it just doesn't make any, it just doesn't make any sense as to why we're here. Like, this is why, this is why I think this is political persecution. Because I don't see any other fucking, any other reason why. The problem with this political persecution is it actually seems to be having no real benefit for Democrats. Like, the only people who actually gobble this stuff up, the only people who tune in to the CNN coverage, the MSNBC coverage, to fawn over the possibility of Trump in a jail cell, are people who are already committed to voting Democrat in November. Those people, those people are, oh, yes, mate, they're, they're, oh, they're getting all hot and bothered by the idea of, of Trump in a cell threat to democracy, you know, all the usual crap they come out with, right? But this doesn't, like, there's anybody in the middle or on the Trump side who you may be trying to convince. Are any of them really sold on this? I ask you. If you're a Trump supporter, I ask you, are any of you sold on this? This, this idea that these Trump trials are massively consequential. I think one of the big things they said is, is Trump is... And I think this has been one of the big barriers is for Trump in in like a way of getting forward is that he is a he is a barrier to Democrats. And the problem for that is, is the Democrats don't like barriers, you see, because as much as, you know, Democrat voters will tell you they love democracy. Mm -hmm. Do they? I'll let, you, I'll let you come to your own conclusions on that. Do they really? As much as they want to tell you this is about the rule of law. And I mean, maybe there's a slight chance that it is. Is it, though? Is it? Mm -hmm. I have my doubts. And I think a lot of a lot of Americans, and I think a lot of people in the world just want this bullshit to stop. And I mean, like, it surprises me that no Democrats want this to stop, really. Not that I see, because it doesn't help you. Like, this is the thing. This actually does not help you, because 
one of the big things that was used against Trump in 2020 is that he's this racist, sexist divider and he's torn the country up and this and that, right? And it's all in disarray and chaos because of Trump. Even though I don't really think a lot of it was Trump. I think it was a deranged reaction to Trump. But that was a lot of the, the case, right? Now that he's in trial every five seconds, talking about his alleged affair with Stormy Daniels. Like, no, no one's no one's calling him a racist, sexist, terrible man, right? And so it kind of, like, it kind of fails, right? Because it's, like, the only attack that works is the kind of Democrat, you know, hero complex tactics where they sit there and talk about how, you know, the reason I vote for Joe is because I'm not racist, I'm not sexist, I'm a hero, I'm a good guy, yes! That's that's the only reason half these Democrats go and vote for. They don't vote for Democrat policy because most most, even most Democrats kind of know that at least I think they do. The, the Democrat policy is crap. Even though they don't want to freely admit it, I think they kind of... I mean, yeah. So I, I did want to show you this. I want all of the news to start asking the question, what is the crime? Because everyone in this court has not been informed of what the crime is. The defendant does not know the crime that was committed. So... I will put a correction here in saying that I think the defendant, Trump, probably does know what the crime is. And if he doesn't, he can Google it. Right. He is on Google to, to be available to be seen. Right. But, you know, the idea, the, this is the thing, right? The, the key question in there is the media should be asking, you know, what is the crime? Because, uh, frankly, from what I've seen from the media, maybe I've been unlucky in my selection. Because, again, I'm not a CNN, MSNBC viewer. Right. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of talk about what is actually happening here. Like it doesn't it doesn't seem like to be a lot of talk about what the actual charge here is. Which I always find very very weird, right? Again, it's it's all this talk about Stormy Daniels and the alleged affair and all this that and the other, right? And none of it is about the actual crime, which is 34 counts of falsifying business records for labeling 420 grand. All right, okay. It's not fucking money. 420 grand. I thought it was 130. Now it's 420. I don't even know. Okay, 420 grand in payments to his per to his personal lawyer, Michael Cohen, as legal fees. Prosecutors say he was actually reimbursing Cohen for paying 130000 to buy the silence of Stormy Daniels. So that's, that's the alleged crime here. But again, this isn't like, this isn't what seems to be going on here. It's about Trump versus Cohen, Trump versus Merchan. Did Trump pipe Stormy Daniels? If he did, what happened? Did she faint? Was the sex good? Like, the fuck? Ugh. This is this is what time is being wasted doing, people. Never mind NYC in the midst of crime everywhere. Never mind all that, bro. Because you know, at least we could get Trump in front of a judge to talk about, you know, fuck knows all this stupid crap about him and his fucking alleged affair with Stormy Daniels. No one cares, bro. No one cares. Can we just move on, Democrats? The attempt failed. Move on. Let me know what you lot think about this down below. And yeah, remember to like and subscribe, people, and see ya.